This is where the law stops. And I start. The room is a cop called Cobra. Russ, some people like to call Cobra a vanity project, but I call it a passion project. Because? Well, you know, it's a, it's a Stallone film. He yeah. wrote it. It's directed by his guy. Sure. It's, his, it's, his... it's pure Stallone. It is, uh, it is definitely like a thousand percent Stallone. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but if you like Stallone, you'll probably like Cobra. Yeah. And I, you know what? I'm a fan. I'm a, a Stallone fan, despite his weird droopy face. And uh, well, you know, now really... you're, you're being ableist and you're making fun of his medical condition. <laughs> oh I, I don't appreciate that. A... So moving on, uh, a... you know, on the surface, there's really nothing all that original here. Sure. It's a cop movie. Mm-hmm. It's about a cop chasing serial killer or, or a cult of serial killers. Yeah, it seemed pretty straight cut forward. As to what yeah, the plot it hits kind of like all the 1980s taboos like um, serial killers, inner city crime, gangs, Satanism. Cobra was directed by George P. Cosmatos, the guy who did uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2. My favorite Rambo. It stars uh, Sylvester Stallone and was written by Sylvester Stallone as the main character Marion Cobretti. It also stars Renee Santoni as Cobra's partner, Sergeant Tony Gonzalez, and uh, Bridget Nielsen, Stallone's at the time real wife, or, you know, girlfriend, I don't know if they got married before or after this, mm-hmm. as Ingrid Knudsen, a young fashion model who uh, ends up needing Cobra's protection after she narrowly escapes the uh, serial killer cult gang. The whole reason Cobra started was because uh, Stallone was cast as Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. And he read the script and was like, this sucks. And he, he basically took all the jokes out of it and like rewrote it and gave it back to the producers like, here, I fixed it. And then at that point, it was just an overblown action film that was uh, kind of devoid of comedy and uh, well beyond what uh, the original you know, script uh, held. So I'm sure they, they went back to the drawing board and said, no, thank you, Stallone. He left the project, I would assume, and then uh, went on to create his own. Yeah, and Beverly Hills Cop went on to be an iconic film role for Eddie Murphy, and Cobra is Cobra. Pretty good opening. It's like basically like the James Bond opening, but uh, Marion Cobretti, right? Mm-hmm. So it starts with him. He's like rattling off a bunch of crime statistics, you know? 10,000 rapes a day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 every millisecond. 4,300 crib deaths. Every second. And then the movie really starts with a, uh, a hostage situation. This, this scene has been in so many fucking 80s action movies. It's oh, yeah. so cliche. The trench coat man yeah, yeah. comes in with a shotgun underneath and starts terrorizing the place. He hates groceries, so he just starts shooting groceries off the shelves. Yeah, just a vaguely ethnic sociopath with no motivation. He just wants to hurt people. He's just like... He's got scars or he's pockmarked, right? So you know he's evil already. Yeah, yeah. Th- that guy plays the same exact character in Maniac Cop 2. Well, why not? Yeah. I mean, you got the typecast. If you look like Marco a Rodriguez is his evil name. person, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Just carry on a shotgun always. Yeah, very cool exaggerated gun blast in the store. And then basically, like, there's a detective outside who's, like, trying to resolve the situation. No he's like, no, we can't shoot the guy. And he's in there killing people. And he's trying <laughs> yeah. to, like, negotiate with him. And then finally the captain's like, call in the Cobra. And then Stallone shows up in, like, some stupid, like, Dick Tracy car with a fucking <laughs> vanity plate that says awesome, spelt phonetically. Yeah. It's fucking Awesome so 50. Uh, is custom license plate, yeah, and actually that was Stallone's real car. That yeah, weird, yeah. that weird uh, Batmobile. <laughs> yeah. So basically, instead of a SWAT team, the LAPD responds to active shooter situations with a roided out forty year old Italian man who goes in, cracks a beer off the shelves. <laughs> yeah. What a fucking bizarre. So he goes into the store. He sips a beer, right? Because I guess he's so cool. He doesn't take his sunglasses off. He sips a beer, and then he antagonizes the the gunman who has people like at gunpoint. Mm-hmm. Like, you're a bad shot. <laughs> when he confronts the guy, he just pops out of a fucking walk-in freezer. Like, how'd you get into the walk-in freezer? He's Cobra, dude. He slithered in. <laughs> yeah. And there's like a really awkward exchange between him. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And then you can see like they edit in him being like, drop it. So it makes sense for him to shoot him, but sure. he doesn't actually say it. He just shot <laughs> yeah. him probably. Yeah. I mean, this movie actually probably had a lot of edit issues. The, the movie was originally 40 minutes longer. 
Yeah. So like the rest of these films we've been reviewing that end up being 71 minutes or, you know, 89 yeah. minutes or whatever, this thing had like a lot more stuff that just give it an X rating and that the, that the, uh, yeah, you could tell the by how short it is like. that it probably got edited a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this scene gives you a sense of, like, who Cobretti is right away. He's a shoot first, ask questions later cop. Mm -hmm. Maybe not ask questions at all. Just shoot and mumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and also, like, they call, they're like, he's a, a member of the zombie squad, which nobody ever really clarifies what the fuck that is. It's just like, yeah, it's the zombie squad. That's the bottom line. Like, yeah, he cleared out <laughs> zombies, you know, from yeah. uh, Chernobyl or whatever. Yeah. And all his superiors look down on him because they're, like, more, um, you know, ethical in their policing and they're interested in, like, you know, doing things by the books. And, and yet they still had to call him in. Yeah, so they you don't might. like him, but they still got to use him anyways. He's yeah. the only guy who can get the job done. He's the only guy who will go in and shoot this guy when, you know, they want to talk to him, jerk him off. But what's hilarious about that first scene is, like, right after he shoots the guy, he takes his red-hot gun, and he doesn't, like, holster it. He puts it right in the front of his pants where his cock is. Yeah, yeah. He like, sh just shot, just fired red-hot weapon. And apparently, Marion Cobretti's penis has been callous from just years of abuse in the line yeah. of duty. So just, it doesn't phase him at all. It's like a rhino dick, you know? Yeah. It just puts it against it, and he actually enjoys it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's singeing. It makes him feel It's alive. like the way a guitar player has, like, calluses on their finger from practicing guitar. Just the front of his dick. His nutsack is like a fucking rhinoceros uh, hide. Maybe that's how he survives this whole movie. Bullets just keep hitting him in his callous nutsack and deflecting off yeah. back into the shooter. Yeah, you could kick him right in the nuts and he just fucking stares right back at yeah, you. Know? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> so when he's leaving the grocery store, there's like a news reporter mm -hmm. who's like giving him shit over, you know, the guy's rights and just shooting him. And he just fucking like uh, pulls the fucking sheet off of the dead kid. And yeah. the store's like, hey, what about his rights? Yeah, in front of the newspapers and or in, uh, fucking news news cameras and stuff. Yeah. Rude. I mean, he's he's right though. You know, is he wrong, Gary? What about the kids' rights? Who is just there at the store getting shot by a crazy gunman? Yeah, no, no, no. Killing the criminal brought the kid back to life and fixed the situation, and solved everything. Ross, it's very, <laughs> that's exactly how it works. So, Anyways, after fucking murdering a vaguely ethnic uh, criminal, Cobretti drives home listening to fucking Gloria Stefan and the Miami Sound Machine. <laughs> You know, he's yeah. a cool guy, Gary. He he likes the tunes of the time. Yeah. Maybe he's just turn on the radio. He likes old cars, but he likes modern uh, house music. His his radio's stuck on the top 40s. You know how it is nowadays. You get the one station, all it plays is like 20 songs over and over again. You can't not listen to that, and it might yeah. have been popular. It was probably the hot song back then. He's probably really into it. He might have got a kickback for putting it in the film. Yeah. You might have been trying to make that actually a popular song because it was not popular at all, and no one had ever heard it. And he, <laughs> he was like, "Hey, let me use let me use a song in my in my movie. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to it in the cure." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, by the way, my impression of Stallone is gonna get worse and worse as this uh, episode goes on, uh, on purpose yeah. for the lulls. Yeah. Uh, so after the the grocery store hostage scene, Cobra goes home. And this, this part of the movie really doesn't disappoint. It's just like, what the fuck moment after what the fuck moment. Mm -hmm. First, he gets to his house and he bullies some like a bunch of like Mexican dudes in a car. Like he wants to park behind him. There's not enough space. So he just rams into the car. Yeah, and then right. the dude gets out and he like fucking, you know, pulls a cigarette out of his mouth and rips his shirt off, revealing the production's lavalier microphone. <laughs> At first, when I see him... You know, he rips this, he comes up in this guy's face, he rips the guy's sh shirt buttons, and I don't know if it was, like, improv or whatever, because they clearly weren't expecting him to, like, rip the shirt open, because the guy's lab shouldn't yeah. be showing. It's just taped to his chest, like some sort of uh, uh, wire tap. You yeah, know. it almost looks like it's purposeful if he's supposed to be like wired or something. And yeah. the actor just doesn't respond. Doesn't do at anything. All. No one else like is yeah. like, oh shit, uh, you're a also cop. like. <laughs> if like, there's such a big fuck up in the scene, cut the scene. It's a completely unnecessary scene that has no point. And also like, so at this scene ends with him like fighting with the dude, and they're like, "Fuck you, man!" When he's walking away. Mm -hmm. The next scene, you see these same characters. They're like, "Oh, hey, sir," and they're like. Very obedient. It's like, why? It ended with conflict. How, how did this fucking... Yeah, after you hit their shirt. Yeah. yeah. You know, they thought... They went home and they thought, thought about, about it. it. Yeah. Like, you know, know what? Like... That cop that was listening to fucking Miami Sound Machine was right. 
Maybe they listen to Miami Sound. We're just working too hard. We're trying to make a living. And, uh, you know, you got to chill out sometimes. Yeah, man. It's L.A. It makes you crazy. It's just all the traffic and stuff. Uh, so, you know, I'm glad he I'm glad he ripped that poor guy's shirt. Yeah. It, it really uh, it led him on the right path. Yeah. And when he enters his apartment, that scene also doesn't disappoint. Like, first he's, like, reading a newspaper, and he just he puts it in his grill, and then he just goes into the house. <laughs> and then he gets, like, a box of pizza. Let's cut for a sec. All right. Before I was so rudely interrupted. Uh, yeah, he puts the, the fucking newspaper in the grill, which is uh, interesting enough. Then he goes into his house and he gets a pizza box and a carton of eggs out of the, the fridge. Yep. And he sits down and puts on the TV and he opens the pizza box and there's a single slice of pizza single in it. Single slice, yep. And he cuts it in half with a large pair of office scissors. And he eats a thin slice yeah. of pizza. Why? <laughs> because he doesn't want to eat a full slice of pizza, duh. In I fact, think this is their, their way of like developing this character. It's like, yeah, he's this, he's an interesting guy. The, the, I think I think there is a weird thing about him and food. This Cobra character really, yeah, he's always talking about health food. Why he's he always talking about health food, and you know, he's eating half. He's eating half a slice. Right? It's like drinking a diet coke. You know, yeah, why does he have half to cut, a slice? Of he pizza. cuts the tip off. Like, just bite the fucking pizza. I don't understand. He doesn't want the crust. He doesn't have to eat it. That's the thing. You're wait, cutting pizza with scissors, you know. Wait, he doesn't. Scissors? He doesn't cut it lengthwise to the point. You're gonna end up with a fucking staple in your pizza, like. <laughs> yeah, that makes silly. him tough. And then, like the the eggs, he pulls out like gun oil and he starts like cleaning his gun. And then what's really funny is like he puts on the TV and at first it's like a Toys R Us commercial or something. So I'm like, yo, is this dude watching cartoons? Mm -hmm. Is he just like some savant that the fucking LAPD brings in to shoot minorities? But he's like, he's got like the mind of a child. I'm watching Wiley Coyote. So basically, it's like the same thing as Rocky. You know what I mean? Where like Rocky's like kind of slow. He's like talking to turtles. But then they put him in the ring with a minority and he snaps right into it. And he just starts kicking ass. Yeah. Not even questioning anything. Yeah. Uh, this is where I fight. So maybe it's like kind of a similar thing, you know? While he's cleaning his gun, there's a news report about a serial killer called the Night, Night Slasher. Slasher. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he was just, just struck for the 16th time, according to the newscast. Um, he's an unknown killer, and he likes to prey upon anyone, right? So his victims have included everyone from businessmen, Chinese immigrants, the elderly, and even a sexually assaulted child. Wow. Yeah. He... So wow. just like the way they have the, the shotgun guy park in a handicapped space to drive home that he's a bad guy before he starts shooting everyone, they just look kind of tack it on the end. Like, oh, oh, also he fucks kids. He wait he I, did he fuck the child or kill them? He killed them after he fucked them. Wow, that isn't that's a horrible guy. Yeah, that night slasher. Yeah. Wait, is that is that? I think it's terrible. Russ wants to defend his character. Like we don't know if he had sex yeah, with this know. kid. He, what he is, could have found the kid already raped, is, then killed him, put him out of his wait, misery. What, what were their were actual, actual words? They said and one. Say again. And uh, even a sexually assaulted child. But not even that he sexually assaulted the child. It might have just been that the kid had already been raped at some point in the past. Yeah. I, I can't say that word. Uh, already been assaulted yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, and now he's going to kill the kid. He doesn't care that the kid was assaulted yeah. in the past. It and like, no again, not my kill. opinion, mm -hmm. but Russ is adamant that we can't just, you know, throw this. this the uh, night slash he might not. We can't just throw guy. a pedophile at the guy. Maybe, you know, the kid was already raped and he just killed him. That's what I'm saying. Do they they don't even know what it looks like at this point. No, he's unknown at this right. point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Although we did see people in a cult like chanting at the beginning. Yeah. But not necessarily him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like I said, this really it kinda, you know, doubles down on the stupid eighty taboos. Like Satanism was a big fear. Yeah. Inner city gangs. It just combines the two. Well, it's easy to demonize those things. But as we're discussing now, not so easy to demonize. <laughs> yeah. Come so, on, even Satanists are good, Gary. In fact, I think... Well, these are fake things that don't exist. Right, there was right. no Satanists, there was no fucking serial killer gangs. These are things that have never, ever happened in the history of they fucking They drive humanity. motorcycles, They're Gary. completely bullshit pseudo-fears that people in the 80s were fucking fixated on. You're building up these these the scariest fake thing you can. Yeah. 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 Hey, it works. So next we're introduced to Bridget Nielsen's character, Ingrid Nudson. Mm -hmm. who just happens to drive by a crime scene and sees the Night Slasher's face. So uh, one of the, the serial killer cult members is a policewoman 
who's able to like look up her license plate and they attempt to kill Ingrid as she's leaving a, a weird like sexy robot photo shoot. Yes. Yeah. It, Which is funny because they attempt to murder her, but instead they basically save her from a sexual assault as she like hides in the parking garage. She's walking out of a photo shoot with a photographer and he's like, you know, you don't have to fuck me right now, but let's go out to dinner and you can fuck me later. Oh yeah, he was hassling her for sex so hard. So the captain and Detective Monty finally give in and they put uh, Cobretti and his partner on the case. Mm -hmm. And they tell him to go go shake down people, go find out anything you can about this killer. And then it just cuts to a scene of Stallone interviewing a bunch of trans prostitutes. And I just like to imagine that like he just he's completely oblivious. He's like, why are all these ladies so tall? Cobretti and his partner go to the hospital to interview Ingrid after she's attacked, which is also like a very strange scene where they're like arguing about food a lot. Yeah. This Basically, guy all, all, all fucking Cobra's partner does is like eat candy. <laughs> yeah. And Cobra just gets on him the whole time. Yeah. Like, hey, you should eat only half the candy. Cut it in half with a knife or some scissors yeah. from your kitchen. And I guess Cobra's like, you know, the bad cop or like the strong, silent one. And the other guy's kind of like the charismatic talker. Yeah. You're going to send him in to defuse the situation. You're going to send Cobra in to take care of the situation. Yeah, but I don't know, man. All the like the character development scenes, they all feel like weird improvised. Oh, like, yeah. It, it's just Cobra also, like, telling what happened? people I thought, how to eat. I thought I didn't want comedy. Like, why, why are there like, stupid jokes and shit? Really bad jokes. Yeah. It, it, they, we don't develop the characters. We just have scenes with them you know it's it's like 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 you're saying it's the guy being like i'm gonna go buy a candy and cobra's like don't eat candy it's bad for you man all you eat is candy and then it goes no, on like, even the character development scenes with like bridget nielsen it's like dude they're actually a married couple and like it's fucking terrible like i believed bridget nielsen's fucking relationship with flavor Flav more than I believe her fucking relationship with Sylvester Stallone. I believe her relationship with the fucking sex robots from the photo shoot <laughs> more than I do her relationship with uh, Marianne Cobretti. C-3P over there humping up on her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. So uh, the cop who's like a double agent with the cult, which again, makes no fucking sense. But anyways, mm. she's put on assignment with Cobretti and his partner who are like protecting uh, Ingrid because she's seen the killer. Mm-hmm. And they're attacked right away, leaving the police station. There's a pretty cool scene. Pretty great car chase scene. Yep. And he rips his car out, out, out the top of a, a parking garage and uh, did some other things. Again, that, that was his car, but they built a fake stunt car to, to tear out of it. Yeah. Because otherwise, they'd have to get another 1950s low-riding thing whatever well, it's, like, it's like a custom you know it's like yeah. a custom windshield that's way too small and shit you can tell it's not yeah. like a regular car but yeah so this whole sequence ends with fucking cobretti smashing his stupid dick tracy car into a boat and it's hilarious because the car is like completely total this is like 1950s car mm -hmm. that has no safety regulations oh yeah shit. He broken and they both just get out without a fucking scratch on them yeah he'd have the uh the steering column just impaled through his chest and uh since it's custom, it's like smaller and shorter. Like, yeah, the, yeah. the whole the, the, it's, it's like such a low rider. It the whole thing would have just crumpled into a like a crushed ball. Yeah, you know, like a can. But this movie does have like great set pieces. There'll be like a fight here and a car chase here and like cool locations. Yeah, they're ripping down Venice and jumping over things. They they explode cars and it's got you know it delivers on the action. Yeah. Um, just the just any character development is yeah happening. dude it's so funny i was watching like a bts thing on this movie and they're like doing an interview with the stunt guy mm -hmm. and he's like yeah stallone one of the best uh performers i've seen do stunts this guy is the best the only person i've worked with uh better than stallone is uh john wayne he's like, <laughs> that old fat dude you know he just has to say that because the two most famous people he's Pushing ever worked with daisy <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that guy did he even do stunts? He, he like rode a, a horse in front of, or like pretended to ride a horse in front of a, a, a rotating backdrop. You know, yeah, it's so fucking funny. He shot pistols and stuff, but maybe he did do some horse stuff. So I'm not a big fan of John Wayne personally. I would much rather. No, I think it's safe to say that John Wayne wasn't the most impressive stunt performer <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> so. uh after this, after the car attack, Cobra decides to take Ingrid out of L.A. Mm -hmm. to get her, you know, out to safety. But they take the cop with them. So, like, uh, you know, the cop who's in the cult. Okay. And he, like, finally kind of figures it out. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. And he confronts her, but not really. No. 
She's like on the phone. He's like, hey, what do you want the phone? But he does have enough time to build his like big, stupid automatic gun with a laser scope. Yeah. That's a... That was actually a real gun, and it comes with a. They, they tried to make it a police a police enforcement gun, uh, in a couple different places, but it never really caught, except uh, one country, uh, and uh, it comes with all sorts of attachments and stuff. So, oh yeah, the what's the gun? That, uh, I forget what it's called. Oh, okay, uh, it's like I, sh- I should have gun? taken good notes like you did, but uh, yeah, it's an automatic. Like, mm, yeah, it shoots like six hundred rounds a minute or something crazy yeah yeah uh but like why would you need a, a laser scope on a fucking automatic isn't the whole point you just like spray people? yeah you're just shooting lots of bullets i don't know why you need a laser scope to yeah. be super accurate about because it looks cool you shine the fucking laser in the lens mm-hmm. you can sh- back and forth just that lens flare yeah jj abrams uh creaming in his jeans yeah so basically like the cult shows up and they take over the whole town which is funny because there's like scenes of like the sheriff's department being overrun by like Three bikers, like, are you kidding me? A bunch of bikers showed up to a sheriff's department, they'd get fucking shot, dude. But you know, what's really important is that he found a town with no scary minorities Mm -hmm. to get uh, Brigitte Nielsen to safety. Yeah. Too bad it was ran amok by bikers. Yeah. Now, now we'll say about this bike sequence. There's a bunch of bikers outside. First, they're shooting up his apartment or his hotel room or whatever after him and Bridget made love. And then they're driving around the front and there's a lot of bikes. There's a lot of motorcycle action in this movie. Like, I've never seen so many motorcycle laydowns back to back to back in an action sequence. You know, sometimes you'll get like one or two motorcycle slides like someone goes, oh, get shot and his motorcycle does the thing. This had so many different motorcycle crashes uh, yeah there's great action sequences great car chases great and, motorcycle crashes. and in fact uh the director uh, george p cosmatos uh wanted actually took on this project because he wanted uh the he wanted to get the award for like the best longest motorcycle slide stunt oh okay and uh did they do it they didn't. They lost out to, uh, dang it, I forget who, but he lost. And he yeah. vowed to never make another motorcycle sequence in, in, a, in a movie of his. Um, oh, okay. He was totally distraught. Yeah, so after they're attacked at like the bed and breakfast, there's a pretty great shootout. And like Cobretti kills a lot of the fucking gang. And then there's like a chase through like an orange grove or some shit. Yeah, and in fact, in this orange grove, there's, there's one shot with the most oranges ever filmed oh yeah was that another big thing that cosmatos wanted he's like stallone we get the, the most oranges in a movie in motorcycle stunts yeah we gotta have the oranges yeah. we need more oranges <laughs> quick more oranges hey, uh, this movie this is uh, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Sorry. i told you it was gonna fall apart <laughs> Yeah, I'm not super impressed with your story. I mean, what are you talking about? He's uh, not a hack slow impression at all. Adrian! There you go. Yeah. That's from uh, Kindergarten Cop? Yes. Yes. Way off. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the big resolution of the movie is at like a foundry, and it's like a real location. Yeah. It's a pretty great scene. It's like the end of Terminator 2, you know, it's just molten, yeah, sure. molten metal and sparks everywhere yeah, for no yeah. reason. It's pretty dramatic. Why the hell are those sparks just shooting off everywhere? It's, it's a foundry. The, is it, Why the hell are they shooting sparks everywhere? It's dangerous as fuck. That's what you do at a foundry. You shoot sparks. Okay. Okay. Right? Yeah, I guess so. What else What else are you going to do there? It's yeah, yeah. Spark factory. And that, don't, don't bring any uh, explosives in your pockets. Yeah. You're going to get your pockets blowed off. Well, that's when Stallone finally uses the match. The whole movie, he's got a fucking match stick in his mouth, like a toothpick. Mm -hmm. You know, because this dude is just so interesting and cool. He doesn't smoke cigarettes. He just chews on a match stick. Yeah, he's got a match stick all the time ready to go. In case he has to fart. Um, In fact, (laughs) yeah, has to impress the whole team. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's finally uh, a scene in the foundry where like he, he covers a guy with fucking gas and throws a match on him. Yeah. Pretty cool. And I was I was relieved that he actually did use a match. If they went through the whole movie and he didn't do anything with that match, I would have been pretty disappointed. So I got a, I got a little cheer for me. Um, yeah. In fact, the, the beginning, 
his uh, his monologue is so mumbly or like grumbly because he actually inhaled the matchstick by accident like per, like oh, immediately before see i thought his and voice was so tense because he had burned his genitals with his gun <laughs> right before doing the the audio recording both yeah it was when he burned his singed him that he <laughs> and then yeah. inhaled yeah yeah so there's a big confrontation finally between uh stallone and the night slasher character which like it's so confusing because like this dude he's like the leader of the cult but he's also like the killer so there's like other guys uh, or maybe there's other people that are killing people or something. But anyways, uh, the actor is uh, Brian Thompson. He's pretty intimidating. He's like a big dude. Mm-hmm. He's like a fucking Muppet with like his big head. Crazy cheekbones. Yeah. Like crazy jawbone. He's got like this, almost like a Buffalo Bill voice. Like, you want to go to hell? You want to go to hell with me? You want to go to hell and fuck me? I'd fuck me in hell. Yeah, I'd fuck you in hell too. Yeah. Yeah. Stallone is my impression again. Yeah. So we can differentiate between. Them. Uh, I gotta say, I'm Stallone every time. Yeah, well, that's really that's all I got for yeah. Brian Thompson. Oh, okay, well, just, I'll stop. You want to fuck me in hell? <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a pretty great fight sequence. He calls him Pig a lot. I do remember. He that. does say Pig a lot. Yeah, and there's finally a moment where like you know Cabretti's basically like defeated him, and he's like, oh, well, you got to arrest me. You're a cop. You got to follow the law and you got to arrest me. Mm-hmm. Take me in. And he just fucking blasts him. Right? Because civil liberties are fucking gay. Or no, he doesn't blast him. What he does is he picks him up and he uh, he puts him on a hook. Right? A hook that's going to bring him into the fire. Yes. The forging fire of the foundry. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty great because even then you, when he puts him on the hook, you're like, oh, okay. He's going towards the fire. You're like, oh, he's probably going to like stop it. R- he stop like it and then right he's like, and then the rest guy. No, he just right. lets him go into the fire and burn to death. It was pretty gruesome. This yeah, guy, yeah. you know, he's hanging by his back muscles just yeah. through the flames. It was it was an all right effect. Um, this movie, it just seems like it's Sylvester Stallone's like nascent fantasy of what it is to be like a cool, edgy cop. Like it really doesn't make any sense. Uh, Cobretti's job doesn't make any sense. The Zombie Squad doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of yeah. trivial nonsense. Yeah, um, yeah. But really you know, way. besides all the cliches. It's a pretty fucking great movie, man. It's like great locations and set pieces, and it's like good cinematography. Mm-hmm. Terrible fucking acting. There's some of the supporting characters are pretty good, mm-hmm. like uh, Detective Monty and and the Captain, who I think is played by Art Lafleur. But then like all the like uh, Stallone's terrible and awkward. Brigitte Nielsen's terrible and awkward. You think that's a. Uh... What do you think the the reason? They're just bad actors at this point? It's bad directing? It's just awkward yeah, I think, scene tension? I don't know if how much direction Stallone took. I think he wrote the script and was probably like, yeah, I'm going to do my thing. You know? <laughs> right. He, he, hey, you need a life preserver for that french fry? You put too much ketchup on. It's just the fucking most awkward, <laughs> stupid scenes. Like I said, it's fucking. this is his real life wife. and You can't even believe their relationship. I hope that's not. I mean, his his first wife, right, or whatever wife. Oh, I don't know, man. Cause this is eighty six. This could have been his second. It did. It, it might have been how their actual relationship was. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. that's why it didn't work. Yeah, and that's why she's uh, with Flavor Flav now. Is she still with Flavor Flav? I don't, know. I don't think so. But yeah, man, talk about like how the mighty have fallen. She was very beautiful in her early twenties, <laughs> and then mm. yeah, in the early two thousands, she was pretty scary. Uh. Plastic surgery or uh, just uh, didn't I think she's just drugs? like a big ghoulish woman. Oh, <laughs> just like a six foot five woman who didn't mm-hmm. age well. I don't know. You make me feel bad, Russ. Like I'm, <laughs> no, I'm no, being sexist. No. Um, <laughs> Russ is reeducating me, guys. I have a lot of problematic behavior. <laughs> He's teaching me through this podcast this that I'm a piece of shit and I'm an asshole. Gary's therapy, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting paid oodles of cash to be here. Uh, no, no, sorry, Gary. No, <laughs> I'm the worst. But, I mean, that's why, uh, yeah. you know, co host There you go. <laughs> Russ, we're both co-hosts, buddy. We're on, oh. we're on equal footing. This is a communist podcast. Mm. Oh, yeah. All of the money that we don't make is shared equally between us. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so like I'm saying, Stallone's comedic timing is fucking terrible. It's so funny that he left uh, Beverly Hills Cop because he didn't want to do comedy. And, like, he's doing shitty, like, street jokes and shit. Like, One-liners. awkwardly. It's yeah. fucking terrible. Although I do love when he's in the grocery store mm-hmm. and he goes, I blow it up, man. He's like, I don't care. I don't shop here. 
That's a fucking great line. It is good. It's classic. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, pretty rude, though. <laughs> My cause... personal favorite scene when he's getting yelled at by his superiors and the cop's like, Cobretti, do you have a penis? Cobretti, do you have a penis? Uh, you think so? Oh, come on, Russ. I just think <laughs> you should do the impression, buddy. Don't let me down. Just do All right, we're going to take that from the top, guys. Wait, wait, what are, what are we trying to do? I'm going to do the the superior, and you're going to do Stallone. Okay. You know what yeah. the line is? No, what is the line? Yeah, but just a little just one. Just a little All right. one. Okay. All right, so <laughs> yeah, okay. We're taking this from the top, and action. <clears throat> Cobretti, do you even have a penis? Yeah, but just a little one. Fucking nailed it, guys. Yeah. Hell yeah. This Fine. is a comedy podcast, yeah. by the way. Gary's teaching me how yeah. to comedy. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the that's the exchange here. I'm teaching Gary how to be a good person. He's teaching me how to be a funny person. Yeah. And together we can be a non funny yeah. <laughs> racist person. It, yeah, it'll it'll make Russ more racist, which he can't get away with because he's he's white. Too and it'll make me less funny, which I can't get away with because I have no charm or personality otherwise. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're both growing from the experience. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, a learning experience for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, not Stallone though. I, honestly, I think this is a pretty you good one, Russ. We had some learn. good ones. Mm -hmm. One thing that we missed while we were recording is the idea of smoking weed at a Sylvester Stallone's ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still think that's very funny. Uh. <laughs> Basically, the joke is like uh, he's got a match so that you could smoke weed out of his butt because that's the only way that it's legal. So you gotta like put your, the weed in like Sylvester Stallone's butthole, and then like you like light it and suck on his dick. Yeah, grind, grind it up, <laughs> yeah. and then you really pack it in there. You could <laughs> smoke it out of my ass. It's why I wax down there. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to catch up when you light it. Yeah. Oh man. I know. Give a good a good pump. Yeah. Here's a match. Oh man. I don't know, man. I love this movie. I think even though it's got bad acting, it's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it's a real I, time capsule. It's definitely very eighty two. What year? No, this is eighty six, and it, like it nails all the eighties action yes. cliches, and it has like almost all the stunts. Yeah, the you motorcycles, know? the car crashes, car jumps. They're going over hills in in uh, Venice. Yeah, uh, it, it it lots of gun action. Uh, you know, exploding. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of like gun action outside in the desert or something, and it. There's nothing for the bullets to hit out there except the air and people, right? But when you're in a grocery store, you're shooting through shelves. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, squib work on this movie, and that was pretty dope. Yeah. They were doing, like, cool exaggerated blasts in the uh, grocery store. Every bullet. And, and great sets and, nice. and yeah. locations for all the, like, the action sequences. Yeah. It looked good. So, uh, you know, the director knew what he was doing. I did hear that Stallone was kind of mostly the director. I mean, Cosm Cosmo was was on it, um, but you know, Stallone's ego. He's it's it's his movie, it's his it's his baby. Uh he wrote this when he didn't get the part to the to a huge successful movie, uh, Beverly Hills. Yeah, and this was like yeah. Stallone at the height of his powers. So his ego was probably through the roof. As big as it could be. He had I made uh, you know, the Rocky movies. Or started the Rocky movies yep. and the Rambo movies. Like he had two written two groundbreaking, like successful film franchises. Did he? He wrote Rambo too. I believe he wrote Rambo. I thought. I thought, I thought uh, it's a James Cameron script. I think two is a James Cameron. Yeah. Okay. He did like the story. Yeah. Okay. But I think Man, they probably worked. Together, I'm pretty sure right? Stallone wrote the original Rambo. And what's most disappointing to me about Cobra because I, I love this movie so much is that like unlike Rocky and Rambo, mm. there weren't like a bunch of uh, Cobra sequels. It's just the one. Yeah. That's all you need. You get no follow-up on Marion Cobretti. They just ride off on a motorcycle. Exactly. And I personally would love to see, I don't know, maybe a sequel 40 years later where he's being investigated for choking a man to death for selling loose cigarettes. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what America needs, damn it. That's right. We need a cop willing to pull the trigger. Because <laughs> that would fix everything, guys. Yeah. If cops, listen, little, if yeah. cops weren't so scared to shoot uh, vaguely ethnic minorities, 
And the yeah. world would be a better place. Kind of people, you know, people who um, might, you might be parked in the wrong spot. And I just want to step back that last statement I just said right there. Uh-huh. That was a joke. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. See, he's learning, everybody. He's learning. It's I working. apologize. No, it was funny, though, in the moment, because we know you're joking. Yeah. And I think I'm learning that as yeah. well. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, 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 yo. Uh, Adrian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was I there saying? There it is. <laughs> what Br- was I saying? <laughs> bring back the classics, guys. Uh, guys, well, I do a great Austin Powers impersonation. Oh, behave! Yeah, baby. It's uh, it's like he's here with me. Now you're smoking marijuana out of my asshole. Is that what he says in the movie? At least twice. I yeah. think that's the this is the joke. Go, uh, butt, butt, uh, smoker. Yeah. Gold, gold. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Finger. that's what happens in in Austin Powers Four. I think uh, we're kind of copyright that and write it. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this actually. If you're writing, if you're gonna write a script, you might as well just write a sequel to some shit. You know, it's gonna sell. That's what everybody's. No one wants to buy an original idea. Don't oh, do but that. I don't think I don't think they buy spec sequel scripts, <laughs> right? <laughs> they probably develop those in house for us. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. I don't think that's how that works. Oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like 56 pages in fucking into Cobra like Ace three. Ventura 3? Okay. I know they're going to make a second one you skip, soon. You skipped Cobra 2. And I know they're going to make three. a second one too uh, soon. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that I'm yeah. there to follow it up. In the second Cobra, uh, Sylvester Stallone murders Flavor Flav when he finds him <laughs> uh, with Richie Nielsen's character. All right, Flavor. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I see the color of your skin, and I know you're bad. Yeah. So now you're gonna have to smoke weed out of my asshole. <laughs> now pucker up, bitch. Oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> you gotta. What are you? You eating a whole slice of pizza? Cause <laughs> I shouldn't have with these scissors. Yeah, Fuck that's me. so gross, man. You be fucking uh, cutting pizza with your office scissors. Next thing you know, you go to like cut up some legal documents, and there's like mar- marinara <laughs> sauce. Just all of, yeah. all of your fingers, all over your gun. He, we're supposed to we're supposed to trust this guy with lethal force. He's supposed to be trusted with executing criminals, and he can't even keep his fucking office supplies and kitchen utensils separate. Separate. They're just you know one and the same. He's gonna eat. An envelope, he's going to eat a slice of pizza. He has a good diet. That and matchsticks and coffee, that's all you need. Yeah. In fact, forget air, just matchsticks all day. (laughs) Yeah. So I I breathe this toxic air like air. Yeah. Matchstick filter. It's science. (laughs) I looked it up to write this shit. Yeah, man, I was trying to think of funny jokes about the matchstick in his mouth, and it's, uh, it's just weird. Yeah, it's a stupid... Why would he do that? Yeah. <laughs> Does he smoke? He never smokes, right? He doesn't smoke a cigar? No. He, he, it's just on the off chance that he can, you know... Throw it on gasoline. Send, you know, burn a criminal to death. Yeah, burn a criminal to yeah. death, exactly. Which is a fucking terrible way to die. Like, whatever crime you commit, <laughs> it'd be pretty oh, bad. Be fucking covering be burnt to death. Gasoline. Burnt to death. <laughs> yeah. Did this guy really do that? He might have just been part of the cult. This is the I think first he just crime. he just clanked his axe together. I don't think he really did anything. Yeah, he he, he honestly, Cobretti might be in trouble. I think he killed several people who really barely even associated with real crimes. Ah, you're 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 a hero. You're a hero, Cobretti. You did it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, we needed you to take out these scum. We're not going to do any dental check. We don't care. These yeah. are scum. Night slasher scum. Yeah. Um, this movie, it, it made comment on, uh, coming back to the whole theme that you kind of mentioned at the beginning, uh, justice. <laughs> yeah. True justice. Yeah. Um, in the eyes of, uh, a, a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. It's basically about how criminals, uh, exploit the system to harm the innocent. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Cobray's answer to that is to bypass the system. By just shooting first. Yeah. Because and he knows they're bad. Yeah. Right. And it's while, like, you know, see every 1980s action movie ever for more mm-hmm. uh, examples of this. And then uh, we're the cops who, you know, are doing the what right thing, but it's just too slow for him. You know, is that and, and cops, they, they praise him at the end, right? No, the cops are a bunch of fucking liberal cuck pussies. And like, sure. 
you know, they, they don't have the balls to deal with uh, crime with a, a strong arm like Marion Cobretti, a, a who just shoots brave, first. Yeah. brave Republican warrior. Yeah. And, uh, you okay. know, that's why he punches the fucking detective at the end. <laughs> to show him that yeah. he ain't nobody's bitch. Yeah. You my bitch. Right yeah, and I just sunset. I pretty much just assume that this is uh, Sylvester Stallone's interpretation of how police work is would should be. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, he did his he did his uh, research, Gary. Yeah, yeah, he read Paula Gosling's book and fucking said he wrote it. Uh, he actually rides a motorcycle at the end, right? Though, right? Oh, okay, that, that looks like he actually rides that. Yeah, and that's just like one of the dudes that he killed's motorcycle. Is that legal? Can you can you just do that? They're like, you want to ride, Cole <laughs> I'm going to take your, your big stupid gun back for you. Yeah, I was going to take this motorcycle and I killed a guy. I killed like 30 guys. He did kill a lot of guys. Do we have a therapist at the department? I, I think I have PTSD from today. <laughs> I killed like eight people in a foundry. It was kind of wild. I picked a guy up, <laughs> hung him on a hook, yeah. watched him burn. Yeah. I burned two people to death today. <laughs> Good job, Cobretti. What do you yeah. want to fucking medal? <laughs> okay, yeah. here you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he did take criminals down, though. He took down like the whole. He fucked up those serial killer gangs. You know what? I'm gonna go back. They weren't so bad. Those killers. Yeah, they were pretty good. They're, I'm sure they like, only like saying, molested one kid. Is the one kid just one out of 16 people they killed? And I'm still gonna only vouch, one of them was a child that they had I'm sex. I'm still with. vouching that the that what's his name? It's uh, a pretty good average. Uh, didn't didn't do it to the kid. He just killed him. Yeah, it might have been other cult members. I'm willing to bet that uh, you know similar crime sprees would have a worse average, but. You know, I don't really know the stats on that. I'm kind of just talking out of my ass now. Yeah, we could, we could look it up. I'm pretty much out of things to say about Cobra, Russ. Uh, let's see. One, one more thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ingrid. 